For months now, NASA has been trying to get discovery into the air, and for a variety of reasons, so far, it simply hasn't worked. Now, this morning, they're going to try it once again, and following this story, CNN's John Holloman. John, good morning. Ralph, good morning to you. The Discovery astronauts have been waiting for this day for years. The crew calls this its fourth try. The mission's been delayed more times than any shuttle mission since the Columbia mission, which went up just before the Challenger disaster back in January of 1986. If you look uh, at your TV set now, you'll see uh, Launch Complex 39B. There's Discovery on the pad. About an hour ago, the blue sky that was behind the space shuttle wasn't blue at all. There were some thick clouds there. There was even a thunderstorm out over the Atlantic that was moving toward the Kennedy Space Center. But uh, it's, um, it's not there anymore. It's dissipated. You can see there the uh, main engines are uh, prepared at the bottom of Discovery to do their business in about, um, oh, 50 seconds from right now. And um, the crew is upstairs in the, in the cockpit on the flight deck now preparing for the last minute launch of Discovery. We'll see what happens. At this point, equipment-wise, everything seems to be working perfectly. There you see the the uh, base of the two huge solid rocket boosters that will be lighted after the three main engines are uh, all checked out and working perfectly. We have about 20, um, 25 seconds to go and we'll listen to the last few seconds of the countdown. Hydraulic power units activated. Sound suppression water system activated. Launch ignition system on. T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, Six. Go for main engine start. Engines are up and burning. Two, one, zero, and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Discovery, launching the next generation of communication satellite technology. Houston now controlling. Houston Discovery, roll, Roger, roll, Discovery. Roll maneuver complete. Discovery's in a heads down position on course for a 28 and a half degree, 160 nautical mile orbit. Discovery's engine is now throttling down as the orbiter passes through the area of maximum dynamic pressure on the vehicle in the lower atmosphere. The orbiter is one mile downrange from the launch site. Altitude 21,000 feet. Engine's now beginning to throttle back up. Discovery, go at throttle up. Go at throttle up. Discovery's three main engines back at full throttle. The orbiter is seven miles from the launch site. Altitude 66,000 feet, traveling 2,500 feet per second, or about 1,700 miles per hour. The time is one minute, 35 seconds into the flight. The next event is burnout and separation of the twin solid rocket boosters. I'm sure you could hear the excitement in the voices of everybody at the Kennedy Space Center and uh, even those astronauts aboard Discovery as they announced the launch. There's, there's a big sigh of relief for everybody. The two giant solid rocket boosters have separated from Discovery and it's now going into orbit using the power from its three main engines. The most dangerous part of the flight, as the astronauts will tell you, just ended. And uh, um, it'll be another probably six minutes before it gets into orbit, uh, about 159 miles above the Earth. This mission has three main goals. Later today, the crew wants to launch a new state-of-the-art communication satellite, which will do a lot of things that current communication satellites just can't do. Using much higher frequencies, it'll be able to send information back to Earth much faster than the satellite that we use to send CNN to you. After that, Tomorrow, in fact, a German-built telescope will fly within a few miles of Discovery, taking pictures of some gas clouds, which are located out between some of the stars in uh, in this and other solar systems. If uh, if that experiment is successful, about six days from now, this this satellite that will fly almost alongside the shuttle will be uh, reeled back in by the astronauts. They'll put it back in the cargo bay and bring it home. 
And late in the week, Carl Walls and Jim Newman, two of the astronauts, will take a six-hour spacewalk, the first one in a while, to check some of the tools which will be used to repair the out-of-focus Hubble Space Telescope. Um, uh, there's, NASA is still hoping that uh, scheduling delays won't prevent that mission from taking place sometime in the month of December. And uh, so far, from what we can hear and what we can see here on CNN Live, the Discovery launch is, uh, is just about picture perfect. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to do, according to everything that uh, the NASA controllers are telling us. And uh, it's a remarkable event. NASA's Bruce Buckingham uh, provided the space agency commentary on this morning's launch. And after so many delays, Ralph, you could see the ex you could hear the excitement in Buckingham's launch. He almost uh, screamed that the uh, the launch and the liftoff was successful. And uh, after, as I say, months and months of delay, everybody at NASA must be in feeling pretty good today, Ralph. John, thank you very much. And that, of course, is very understandable considering how long they've been waiting for.